Alright guys, so for this video we're going to be going through the galactic command. Now I recently already did a video where I talked about the data mine information. A lot of that stuff has already been on point, it's all been confirmed by the devs, but there is a little bit of new information in here and so that's what I'm going to be going through today. So just to quickly recap what's been going on, uh, the galactic command it is not meant to be new content. I think the devs made that pretty clear in the live stream today where they basically said, you know, they're not trying to pass it off as some sort of new cool feature or anything. What it's meant to do is for those players who are just coming into Sotar for Kotet, so they're using their boost, or their level 65 boost, and they're going to be playing. Or for players that have just gone in and th uh, that came into the game through Knights of the Fallen Empire, uh, they're very unfamiliar with how it works, how heroics and flashpoints and all of that works. So this galactic command is just meant to be a new interface that makes it a lot easier for these people to access all this new content. And then it's also supposed to be a way by which us veteran players who've been playing for years uh, get rewarded for doing so. And it's also meant to be now the new way by which endgame gear is distributed and all that stuff. But that's information for a separate video. I just want to say that's kind of how they're passing it off. So don't think of it as them trying to pass off this new, uh, you know, group content type thing. I mean, it's all just repeating old content, kind of like how the Dark vs. Light event was. But into the actual feature itself, it's accessed by pressing Control G. So it's meant to be this kind of new page, this whole new way by which we can interact with these things, uh, like heroics and all that stuff. And you basically kind of queue up right from there. So you queue up, and when you're queuing up, you have to decide things like, are you going to be fighting for the dark or the light side? So for example, if you're queuing up for a PvP war zone, you basically right off the bat need to say, through the new interface, it's going to ask, are you fighting for the light or the dark side? And you get to choose. Another really cool thing is it offers three difficulty modes, so Story, Veteran, and Master. And this is meant for like the missions themselves, Uprisings, uh, I'm assuming Flashpoints maybe, but definitely the new stuff like Uprisings. And, uh, and also the story, right? Whether you're playing Knights of the Fallen Empire or Knights of the Eternal Throne, when you're playing that story, not only do you choose uh, your, your difficulty, but also you do get rewarded for it. You get these command points, which will help you level up your command rank. Now, the important thing is the more... Uh, higher difficulty you choose, the more points you're going to get. So basically, you do get rewarded for doing more difficult things. It's not just meant for those people who want a challenge. Now, the whole point of doing this stuff and doing all these activities all over again is that you get these uh, command experience points, which are then used to level up your command rank. Each time you level up one command rank, you will get a command lockbox. And these command lockbox will contain endgame gear for you to use. So that's kind of your incentive to do all this stuff. Now in terms of what these command crates actually contain aside from that endgame gear is they will also give you companion gifts, cosmetics, cosmetic armor, weapons and armor, mounts, pets, and then um, obviously that endgame gear. So basically it's not just meant to be a way by which you can gain, gain endgame gear, it's also a way by which you can kind of show off with really cool new armor stuff. I'm not sure what that association is with the cartel market. Once again, during the dev stream they made it very clear that none of this stuff has anything to do with the cartel market. So I would assume that when they say cosmetic weapons and armors and mounts and stuff, that's all new stuff. So kind of like, you know, how you have uh, op-specific mounts like Wings of the Architect and the Dread Rankers, uh, the Dread Master's Ranker or whatever, you know, that kind of new kind of mounts and armor and cosmetics pieces will be given to us through this um, command crate system. And so that's kind of cool to see some new weapon designs and armor pieces and stuff come into the game. And it's all meant to be purely cosmetic. And then the other stuff is obviously that really, really powerful gear. And that's what they kind of mean when they say, play more activities, earn more rank, get more power. And so on one hand, I'm a little bit uh, disappointed with the fact that for players that who are pretty casual, who aren't going to spend a lot, a lot of hours playing the game, they won't be able to get the really high level gear or it's going to take them a really long time to get it. But it, on the other hand, it's kind of a good thing because those players who actually put in a lot of work are going to be rewarded for it in that they will have the best gear. And considering PvP, PvE, or all of it is now the same gear, those people are really going to be considered powerful. They will always have the upper hand in war zones and flashpoints and when dueling each other and stuff like that. And so that's kind of important to give rewards to players who actually put in a lot of work and that is one really good thing about this. I like the fact that it really rewards you for grinding and spending hours playing the game. On the other hand, casual players like myself are kind of going to be left out, but that's okay. Uh, you know, as long as the people who put in the hours of work are getting rewarded, that's always a good thing. Now, in terms of the new stuff, that's kind of all old stuff I've talked about before. The new kind of information we got is this whole dark versus light thing. And this isn't to be confused with the dark versus light event. That's ending. That's going to be over. But they're kind of take, they've taken that concept of dark versus light and made it into a more permanent thing with this galactic command. So starting with Kotet, basically you're going to choose, are you fighting for the dark or the light side of the force? After you've chosen that, 
all of your actions, everything, completing missions, uprisings, uh, war zones, and even just things like killing elite enemies, making story choices, those will all contribute to this dark versus light side war that's happening on your server. So very similar to the dark versus light event, all of the dark and light points are going to be tallied and there's going to be an ongoing war on your server. So these dark side and light side choices will influence the balance of the force and that will be reflected on each server. So there's a meter at the bottom of your galactic command interface. This meter is going to be constantly changing and you can see which side is winning. As one side begins to dominate, players will see the impact all around them. Now this is the cool thing. So they gave a very small example. They said, let's say for example the dark side is growing stronger, it's reached dark 4. And keep in mind, it only goes till dark 5. Then players are going to start seeing maybe Sith Acolytes spawning and attacking Alderaan and Tatooine. So it says, keep your eyes open as your efforts change the galaxy around you. So now, that, now that's very cool, and that's actually something I was hoping would happen with the Dark vs. Light event. But it didn't happen there, but at least they're kind of putting it in now. Which is, whether you make dark or light side choices, that is actually impacting what's happening on these servers. That's actually impacting how you're playing the game, and that no server is really the same. Now this is on a very, very small extent. Like who cares if acolytes are being spawned, but still it kind of shows that trend that they're thinking in that way and hopefully we're going to see some really big cool things happen in the future where we actually see some really big changes happen to servers because of this dark versus light war. I think this is a very good direction, I really like this and I hope we see a lot more of it in the future. Now to be declared the winner in this dark versus light side war, you have to reach either dark or light 5. So basically rank 5 in terms of the dark or light meter and that's probably going to take some time Think of it kind of like Conquest, where you're kind of constantly earning points in order to um, beat other people. This is just basically there's two sides, dark and light, and all the points are going to be tallied. And um, it's kind of going to be a battle of numbers. Like whoever the people choose they want to align with, whether it's dark or light, that side's going to win. And um, you get rewards based upon whether you were aligned with the winning or the losing side. So let's say, for example, if I decided my character was going to be dark side and dark side ended up winning the battle on the server, I will get two benefits. Firstly, I will gain bonus command experience, command experience points, which is going to help me gain up my ranks and obviously get those command crates. And the second thing is access to a specific cosmetic item vendor. Now, what, what kind of items you're going to see there? I'm not sure. I'm not sure whether it's going to be just exclusive to the people who won a certain battle and whether those items will change or stuff like that. I do hope something like that. It's not just going to be one static vendor that doesn't change and constantly gives the same items. Um, and then it says, if your character alignment was with the losing side, so if I chose dark side and light side ended up winning the battle, well, I'll still receive a benefit, which is a bonus to all uh, dark side point or light side points earned. So wh whatever was the losing side, all the people who decided to play on that side will gain a, a huge bonus to the points that they earn. So what this means is um, that it's always going to kind of ch change and the people who ended up losing a certain battle are then going to gain an advantage in the next battle. The advantage being they have a boost to how many points they're earning. So what this kind of ensures is that not one side is always dominating the other. Like it's not that everyone suddenly decided they're just going to keep doing light side and light side keeps winning because at the end of the day dark side will have racked up enough bonus points that they will actually have a huge advantage and then be able to finally overtake light side and win for, for, win for a chance. So uh, you know just to give you a quick example if I chose light side and dark side ended up winning well then for the next battle my, all my light side points will be uh, gained at a higher rate than the other people who, who are gaining dark side points. So that's a really important thing to ensure not one side just continually dominates the other. So though that's all the information we have for the Galactic Command. Um, the live stream was today. I do believe we're having another live stream on Thursday where they're going to be giving even more information. So stay tuned for that. But this is all the information we have on Galactic Command so far. I think it's sufficient. I think it's really cool. I like the new interface. I like the fact that they're kind of revamping it and making it easier for new players. Uh, I do hope that they end up actually coming up with some cool content. So um, with Kotet and stuff that is so re replayable that I'll keep you know replaying the story and getting those points. But other than that, I think this dark versus light side stuff is pretty cool as well. So I'm really excited to see how that will play out in the game. I hope you guys enjoyed the video. I really hope you guys found it informative. I'll see you in the next one.